Good morning. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. It is good to see all of you on this Lord's Day, a day in which we are thankful for students and leaders. We will bless them as the school year begins, our TDS. You see all of the school supplies that are up here. We will be consecrating those. We will also baptize Tribble Schwartz. It's going to be a great day. There are a few announcements to share with you. Please note in the bulletin all of the activities this, this afternoon for the children and for the youth. It is uh, our kickoff time and the children will be uh, across the street at the uh, Williams Bryce Center and of course uh, Paul Fry who has abundantly given us uh, his property out at uh, his home to use for our youth this afternoon and a cookout out there. So you'll see the times. Now, I also want to remind you that our Wednesday night supper starts this week. We're going to have spaghetti. So if you want to have the spaghetti, please uh, see uh, or call Amanda today or tomorrow or, or Tuesday morning before noon. It would be great if you would do that. Next week, we're going to give the Bibles. Uh, to our children that are uh, to receive them, and we hope that you'll be here for that. Uh, and I'll mention more about this a little later. There are on the on the rail. We have two things. Number one, you could probably see the book bag tags that uh, are for all the students to put on their book bags. And behind that, on the rail where the uh, cups are usually uh, put placed. Uh, there are the cards that we have for Trinity Day School. As you recall, one of the ministries that we have for Trinity Day School is that we as a church pray for the children of that place and also the teachers and staff. So uh, I invite you to, before you leave today, and maybe even during the last hymn, uh, you may come up and uh, uh, get one of the cards uh, the last hymn is where he leads me and let him lead you right up here and get a car. Uh, so we'll be singing that. Friends, it's good to have all of you on this wonderful day. We welcome all who are with us and let us worship the Lord together. By passing the peace. <laughs> be seated. is found in the bulletin. We've gathered together in the presence of God to offer our praise 
and our prayers. We come before God with confidence. Knowing that even when we can't find the words, God's own Spirit is right here with us. giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings, and pleading for us before the throne of grace. come to you today with restless hearts, O God, and weak in soul. For the Lord, our God, is constantly revealing God's self. We pray with the intention of inviting the Spirit into our lives so we may be justified through your grace and set upon your path. Let us confess our sins individually and then together. 
God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but by our readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead, that in Christ your name may be glorified in all the earth. For we know through our confession that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose and answer the Lord's call with openness in our body, mind, and spirit. Hear these words of forgiveness. Through the grace we have been given by your Lord, because of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our hearts and souls are justified in your glory, O Lord, by the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit surrounding us always. In the name of Jesus Christ, your, son, your sins are forgiven. All glory and honor to our triune God. Amen.
sit in the hall until the Lord's Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. At the end of the service, we invite each and every one of you to come up to the altar and um, take one of our backpack tags, uh, school staff, you can put it on whatever bag you carry, students, um, let everybody get one first, and then if we have extras, we invite you to give those out to other friends and family that cannot be here today. Also, while you're here to take your backpack tag, um, just a reminder to take your um, TDS school card, and we ask that you pray for the student or teacher as they start the school year, but more importantly, throughout the entire year. At this moment, I would love to invite the children up for children's moments.
Our scripture lesson for today comes from the Gospel of Romans, beginning at chapter 8, verse 18 through 30. Hear now the word of the Lord. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from the bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait. We wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined He also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of this, the holy word of our Lord. has been exhausting, both mentally and physically. I started this week with three hours of sleep due to the lock-in last weekend with the youth, which, by the way, was an amazing time. I then needed the first half of this week to get ready for the school year, both for the youth and for me. 
as I start my second year of seminary. On Wednesday, I flew to Texas for the fourth time this year, but not for school, unfortunately, for my uncle's funeral. My two-hour flight ended up taking eight hours, and yes, I was sitting at the gate on the plane for more than half of those eight hours. Then, on Thursday, Trinity lost a sweet, sweet member, Miss Betty Ray. The last 48 hours, I have attended one funeral, traveled across the country, and then watched another funeral online. And somehow, I wrote my sermon the day before, once again. Even though I promised myself last time, I was never going to wait that long again. Now, I don't say any of this to complain or to stand up here and grumble, but more so, so I could talk about my own grief that I'm experiencing for various reasons. So I know many of you are experiencing a stage of grief for your own various reasons and situations. Grief is weird. It affects everyone in such different ways. Some people want to talk about it. Others refuse to acknowledge it even happened. Some people cry the drop of dying, while others tell jokes and they laugh. With every experience that causes growth, even an individual can act differently depending on the situation. While I'm certainly not a professional that has studied grief on a clinical level, I am a human who has experienced various degrees of grief at different times throughout my life. With grief comes along this sense of pain and suffering, which is never pleasant. If you have pain and suffering from a broken bone, then the doctor will give you an x-ray and determine how to bandage or cast that bone properly. If you have pain from a cavity, the dentist will evaluate your tooth and advise a treatment plan. However, that's the thing about the pain and suffering that goes along with grief. There is not a fit-all formula to solve the problem. In Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 30, we read about the pain and suffering by all of creation. Paul compares this pain to a woman in labor, as we are the children of God. He then talks about hope, which is revealed to us by God through the Holy Spirit. While grief and hope aren't necessarily the two things you would think that go together, there is no reason we should not be. In verses 24 and 25, Paul explains, For in this hope we are saved. But the hope that is not seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Much to our dismay, hope does not equal instant gratification. Paul spoke some real wisdom when he asked, Who hopes for what they already have? If we hoped for what we already had, our trust would not be rooted in God. It is because of our hope and patience while waiting for God to respond that our faith can become stronger. Well, here's a little spoiler alert. God knows what he is doing. In seminary, we like to use this really fancy word called omniscient, or in non-seminary lingo, all-knowing. We also use the word omnipotent, or once again, in non-seminary lingo, all-powerful and able to do anything. As Christians, even in the deepest despair of our grief, we must remind ourselves through the presence of the Holy Spirit, we have the hope that God 
is certain. Even though we cannot see our hope. For if we saw what we were hoping for, then it would not be said hope. Moving on to verses 26 and 27, Paul explains further. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I have found great comfort in verses 26 and 27 this last week. I'm often the one to slightly joke with my grief and say something really awkward to a grieving family member, friend, like, I don't know, I haven't taken a pastoral care class yet. How am I supposed to know how to comfort someone who is grieving or give proper advice in a sticky situation? But I've come to find out people often aren't looking for you to say something. They're looking for your presence, especially amidst the absence of their loved one or for someone to listen when all others have seemed to turn their cheek. There's the saying, I'm at a loss for words for a reason. We don't always have the proper words or explanations for conversations with one another. And even more often than when we talk to one another, it feels as if we don't have the proper words or the correct format, whatever that may mean, to pray to God either. Well, here is another spoiler alert. God doesn't expect or require us to properly formulate every sentence and thought we pray to him. God gives us the Holy Spirit for this reason. When we need help filling in those blanks because all else seems hopeless and we're at a loss for words, the Spirit knows what is in our hearts. Pastor Joseph preached on this just last week when he reminded us, your heart is where your treasure is. The Spirit is here to provide us with the hope we need and the comfort we seek, particularly when the pain and suffering becomes too much for us to bear. To conclude this passage, Paul provides us with even more comforting verses in 28 through 30, saying, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. God knows me, but God also knows you. God knows his children. He knew us before we even knew him, because we are God's creation, and our purpose is to live a life, that of imitating Christ. It is through the faith we have, we are justified or forgiven. For when we are justified by our faith in Christ, God then glorifies us, which is ultimately what we are all waiting for. Paul explained this at the beginning of the passage in verses 18 and 19, resulting in the passage coming full circle. When I was a teenager, my dad and I would constantly argue, mostly about how messy my room was. We would both be too stubborn to give in, but at the end of every argument, No matter how big or how small, my dad would open up his arms really wide and say, come here. He would then proceed to give me a big hug and a kiss on the forehead or on the cheek. He would tell me, I don't always like you, but there is never a second that goes by where I do not love you. Well, here's your last spoiler alert for the morning. Your Father in Heaven loves you too. If He did not love you, there would be no reason for us to be right here in this church this morning. There would be no reason to baptize trouble after the sermon. 
There would be no reason for Jesus Christ to have died his gruesome death on that cross. God may not always like our choices, but because of his great and unfailing love, God forgives us. It is up to us, his children, to place the confidence and trust of our hope in the fact that all things come together in God's perfect timing. Going back to the grief I was talking about at the beginning, the issue here is that grief clouds all of our thoughts and our judgments. There's this circle of pain and suffering, grief and hope, sin and forgiveness, life and death. It's in this circle in which only God can draw. We get frustrated when we try to take our own action and draw a perfect circle, but somehow it always seems to look a little bit more like an oval. As believers, we have to humbly remind ourselves, especially in the hardest times, we did not randomly fall into a relationship with God, but rather we are called and created to be in this relationship. It's when it feels the hardest to remember we have to pull ourselves up out of the depths and remind ourselves God knows what he is doing. God is all powerful. God loves us. Christ knows what it's like to feel this pain and suffering of grief, but Christ shares the good news anyways. He shares the news of God's knowledge power, and love. He says and shows us how it will always be revealed to us in a variety of ways because of our faith found through our hope. In the name of our omnipotent God, amen. This time I invite Tribble and his parents to come forward. Ah, oh, there we go. And Big Brother, yeah. And I invite the congregation to please turn to page 39 of the hymnal. and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today I present Triple Oliver Schwartz for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you these questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they prevent themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture trouble in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example He be guided to accept God's grace for Himself, to profess His faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Now, as the body of this congregation, 
Do you, as Christ's body, the church, both reaffirm and both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith in life and include trouble now before you in your care? And live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Tribble with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. Is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of our We begin now, we continue now with the thanksgiving over the water. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people in, as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing so, to the Lord all the earth. Tell God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He, calls his, he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and he who receives it to wash away his sin and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life that dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. See this pretty boy, we're going to hold him this way for us. There we go. Friends, I want to introduce to you Tribble. Now that's your maiden name, right? Okay. Tribble is going to be your responsibility. As his spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ. Tribble, these are good people. Very good people, Tribble. They're going to love you and take good care of you. They're going to stay in the nursery when you need them to stay in the nursery. They're going to teach you Sunday school. And one day when you're running down the hall through the church, one of them is going to say, stop running. <laughs> Triple these people are wonderful people. 
They are your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And he, in Christ, will work through you to them. And they will be Christ's hands and feet in your life. Tribble, I want to tell you right where that font is right now. Your big brother was baptized there. Aunts and uncles were married here. Your great granddaddy was remembered here. This, my boy, is a special place. And it is all the more special because of you. And we thank you. And we thank God for you this day. Dribble Oliver, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Triple Oliver, may the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You want this? No, you don't. I'm going to give you back to Daddy, okay? Oh, okay, Daddy, there we go. Hey, you come here for a minute. Look at this water. You remember this water? You remember when we baptized you? I bet you don't. But you know what? We remember every time we baptize, like your brother and other people, we remember our own baptism. We remember that Jesus loves us. Always, no matter how big we get. And son, you are a big boy. But Jesus loves you. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. <laughs> now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ through baptism. You are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation, made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We thank, joy, and thanksgiving. We welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, members and friends of Trinity United Methodist Church, I commend Tribble Oliver Schwartz to your love and care. When he and his parents aren't here as often as you think they need to be, call them. <laughs> Text them. Bring them supper. Take care of them. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And the congregation responds, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. And now, will you please affirm our newest baptized member, Tribble Oliver, by your affirmation of applause. <laughs>
remember that even in our grief, life goes on. As Rachel was saying, we have our hope and we know that in all things, God is in control. And in the midst of death, we are in life. Yesterday afternoon, we remembered the faithfulness of Betty Ray Merle. She was a light to this church. I can remember more than once Betty Ray taking a visitor to lunch afterwards. She would send phone calls to people, send them gifts, people that she didn't even hardly know in this church. She cared for them. We will miss Betty Ray Murray. We pray for her family. We pray for each other. We're thankful that Harry Jolly and uh, Ann Roper are back in their prospective residences today. We also want to continue to pray for our, uh, our nation in this time. My friends, will you pray with me? Lord, we live each day, sometimes facing the grief that sneaks up on us, the grief that in a moment of a song or a smell or a sight comes to us. It comes to us on anniversaries of death or our own wedding anniversary or other things, Lord. We abide in grief still. We grieve what our nation has become. We grieve what our denomination has become. We grieve, O oh God, but in our grief, we hope. Our hope, O oh God, is not in institutions, it is not in flesh and blood. It is not in frail leaders. It is in you. May instruments of hope and truth and love prevail, O oh God, against the forces of chaos and confusion against the forces that would divide, against those who hate and sow division. Forgive us of our sins and shortcomings for the times that we have not loved you as we should. And help us to remember that in our baptism we find hope. Today, Tribble begins his baptismal journey. And yesterday, we celebrated the conclusion of Betty Ray's baptismal journey as her baptism is finally fulfilled in presence with you. Guide us as a church, our leaders. Guide us in all things. We ask these things in your name. Amen. At this time, we have, we're going to take a moment to bless our school supplies. I, you know, I, I wish, I just wish 
that when I was a boy, I could have had a Batman book. But I see all of this, the glue and the crayons and the scissors, and I see your generosity. I see the ways that you are striving to make a difference in the lives of children in Sumter. Thank you. Let us bless these school supplies. Almighty God, there will be excited hands and excited hearts to start a new school year. We pray that you will protect them. We pray that you will watch over them. Bless these supplies, O oh God, that they may be used for students to learn, to grow as the human beings you've taught them to be and created them to be. Bless their teachers. Thank you for this congregation and their generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. And finally, we also want to consecrate one of the missions of our school, of our church, the Trinity Day School. At this time, I want to invite the members of the Trinity Day School board to please stand. Two, three, yes, there we go. These folks are making sure that the Trinity Day School is doing its mission of preparing children in Christ and for the education that they will receive. On behalf of the congregation, I thank you, members of the board, for the work that you do in the life, for the life of this church and for the children of Trinity Day School. Thank you. May be seated. This is, I think we're over three decades now, aren't we, Christy? All right, we're over 30 years. Can you think about all of the children that have come through Trinity Day School? How many teachers and staff? What a blessing. As you've heard, we were saying in the announcements, we invite you to uh, take one of these prayer cards with you and the final hymn. But let's pray now for Trinity Day School. Friends, would you please stand with me as we bless Trinity Day School? Almighty God, we are thankful for Trinity Day School and the ways that children experience grace and love through the teachers and staff and curricula Help them to grow. Help them, O oh God, to be ready. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the staff and teachers. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless them in a special way. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We've done all these things because this is part of our gifts to God. The mission to Trinity of Trinity Day School of these school supplies. And now we give our gifts to Almighty God. This time I call our ushers forward for the dedication of our tithes and offerings.
Bless, O Lord, these gifts that they may be used to further your kingdom. Make them sufficient for the task that lies ahead. These things we ask in your name, O Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. 